from the Office of U.S. Congresswoman Sandy Adams, Mr. Don Perdue. <laughs> Representing the Office of Governor Rick Scott, Mr. Russ Abrams. <laughs> and also Commissioner, Commissioner Andy Anderson. <laughs> Thank you all for taking the time to be here today. Mr. Bob Cabana. Thanks, Cheryl. Charlie Bolton here. Uh, he's been gracious enough to come up and uh, share a few words with you also and say what's going on in Washington. We charted our future a couple years back, and we've been working on it ever since. And uh, as we go through this talk this morning, I think you'll see that everything we laid out is coming to fruition. This visitor center is going to be changing in the next few years, and it is going to be extremely positive. I think you all know that not one penny of any appropriate dollar gets spent at the uh, Kennedy Visitor Center. It is totally self-sustaining on the revenue that it brings in. This facility will showcase not only the shuttle, but uh, the space station and all that we've accomplished with the shuttle for the last uh, 30 years. I think you're all going to be uh, really pleased with what we have, and it will rival anything anywhere. And uh, that is something our community can be extremely proud of. Actually bring work here to the Kennedy Space Center and get those experiments up on uh, the International Space Station, bring researchers in, uh, pay for the access to Space Commerce Way to Exploration Park and the Space Life Sciences Lab. Eventually, uh, hopefully in the near future, we're going to get the fence moved so that it's actually outside the fence of the Kennedy Space Center. Soon, I think we'll have an announcement on uh, the use of our uh, excess capacity here at KSC with one of our order processing facilities. Uh, figure out how we can release some of these facilities earlier to make this happen. Uh, we have plans for OPF Phase 1 and 2 with potential customers coming in there also. Make that highway a world-class facility. It's nicer than it was during the Apollo program where the Apollo capsules were processed. And we'll compete uh, those boosters to determine if it's uh, more appropriate, cost-effective to have liquid boosters or continue with the solids. But because it was not outfitted, uh, we didn't waste a penny on that. We'll have to make some modifications to the base of it to accommodate not just the central core as it was for Aries, but those two uh, solids on the side, play exclusive. And Ed's going to come up and talk about commercial space, but you know we're going to do both. All right, uh, we're going to have a heavy lift program that allows us to explore, but we want to be launching up to our international space station. We made great progress there with the four companies that we have on our uh, commercial crew development program and. I could go on and talk about it more, but I'll take Ed's thunder. Satellites uh, that can go rendezvous and refuel other uh, satellites in space, and that work is being done right here at the Kennedy Space Center. I think you know that that says a lot about the capabilities and the talent that we have here. Launch services, commercial crew, and 21st century ground ops ground project. You're going to hear some great presentations from Amanda and and Ed and Pepper. And, and like Bob, I really want you to hear them talk about what we're doing. We have two choices. We can, even embrace, we can either embrace the future and make it as successful as we possibly can, or we can suffer the consequences. So we are blessed. We have an opportunity to do great things here. We can choose to or not to agree passionately. And that's about the future of this nation and our leadership in space. And we could not have three greater leaders when it comes to the things about which we care. First time since 1972 that we've had two spacecraft orbiting the moon in formation, coordinated and everything. The granddaddy of them all, I like to tell people, it's gonna be like, you know, they have big football games on Thanksgiving weekend. How many of you like football on Thanksgiving weekend? Well, the Super Bowl of space is gonna be right here on the day after Thanksgiving. And that's the launch of MSL, the Mars Science Laboratory. We've got a vehicle that's going to fly it down, hover for a while, the lander, lower it by a crane, by a cable, put it on the surface, and then it's going to range the planet Mars hundreds of meters a day. Not color, you name it. This is uh, science fiction come to life. And it's going to happen, and it's going to start right here the day after Thanksgiving. So there are absolutely incredible things going on here, and you need to enjoy them and be proud of them and take credit for it, uh, because you did. 
and you make it possible. You know, encourage people to get interested in what you do down here and what you bring. Whether you're a support contractor or a prime contractor on one of these vehicles, you do great things. So we get to see all the missions that Charlie talked about here um, as they come through Kennedy Space Center. And we also continually enhance the capabilities that we have and work closely with our customers in order to make sure that we're getting them what they need to get. The thing maybe for this group here is that um, you see on the side there something called Alana. That is a project we've had in work for about three years. It's um, an educational initiative to launch uh, tiny little cubes about this large, as well as earth science and some heliophysics missions. We have one mission that will be launching out of the Kwajalein Atoll here early next year. Our commercial crew is a little closer to home. Uh, our mission is uh, to try to figure out how we're going to get uh, humans, Americans, and our partners into low Earth orbit. I'll have some video of our first flights from Kennedy Space Center over to Space Coast, in which we'll be doing some test flights and then eventually going to the International Space Station. A little bit similar to how, how the LSP program works, in which we'll buy services then to get our crews to the International Space Station. We expect test flights that have to go into orbit or test flights that are dealing with uh, abort capabilities and which you might want to recover will probably be from the Kennedy Space Center. So I expect to see a number of demo and test flights uh, through the Space Coast between the 2013-2014 time frame and especially in the 2015 and 2016. The whole idea of the commercial crew for NASA is that we have to ensure that we're going to be safe enough to fly not only our, our crew, but any real astronaut or any really space participant. Not just planning anymore. About a year ago, we became a, a follow-up program in which we then initiated our what we call our commercial crew development number two effort. But in addition to that, we've got a more daunting task, which is to make the, the entire center and the capabilities to go with it attractive to commercial industry. And that's not just the commercial crew industry that Ed spoke about. That is a large range of commercial capabilities, and we're going to use the assets on the center. And in order for us to be successful at it, we're going to have to, have to make the assets and the capabilities we have at KSC attractive. And attractive means affordable. Attractive means having a, uh, uh, making sure launch availability is where it needs to be. And multi-purpose that DAB so it can use, um, so it can operate more than one user out of that uh, facility.